Welcome to Delphi Labs. My name is Paweł Głowacki and today I'm going to continue with a data snap series of our tutorials. I'm going to build a data snap multi-tier database application that will take data from an interbase database and going to expose it via a web server application using web broker technology. I'm going to build a client based on a new jQuery mobile technology. So this is the first part of the two parts tutorial. In this first part I'm going to focus on understanding of a web broker technology and also I'm going to build a jQuery mobile boilerplate web page. In the next episode I'm going to extend it and take da dynamic data uh, from a DataSnap server and build a jQuery mobile pages uh, dynamically. Okay, so what is this uh, jQuery? Let me uh, show you the. This is the page of a jQuery mobile. Uh, jQuery mobile is still in alpha free stage, so things that I'm going to build today may differ from the uh, final release. This is a very popular uh, framework for building uh, web pages uh, that has this uh, mobile look and feel. So jQuery is very popular uh, JavaScript. Uh, library that makes it easy uh, to build sophisticated uh, JavaScript enabled pages and jQuery mobile is really a layer on top of the jQuery uh, that make it uh, easy to build uh, web pages that are optimized for web browsers uh, available on smartphones. What is also interesting is that I'm running now uh, the web page uh, in the uh, in the standalone desktop browser. This is a demo page uh, for jQuery mobile and the objective uh, for me today is going to build a uh, so-called uh, boilerplate. So uh, here on the demo page for uh, jQuery mobile uh, there is an anatomy of a page and here there is a, a example of a boilerplate uh, jQuery page. So this is the page, uh, this is the, the source code uh, for the whole uh, jQuery mobile uh, page that can be used as a starting point for building uh, more complex pages. So this is how this page uh, looks like and this is the page uh, that we are going to serve from our Delphi web broker web application. Okay, so uh, what is this uh, web broker? Uh, web broker uh, is a technology and a framework in Delphi and in C++ Builder for building web applications. So for most of the uh, developers, uh, Delphi is all about building desktop great looking applications like for example Skype is a great example of a, a sophisticated Windows user interface. But not so many people are aware that you can also use Delphi and C++ Builder for building web applications. So here in Delphi projects I have this web broker application. Also this is available for C++ uh, builder projects but I'm going to focus on Delphi. So let's create a new web server application. So before I continue it's quite important to understand that there are other types of uh, applications, web applications that you can build using this technology. So for example data snap uh, web broker application, data snap rest application or uh, web services SOAP server applications, they are technically all just web broker applications with some uh, components and code added by the wizard. With this uh, wizard web server application we are building just plain uh, web application that we can be a starting point for something more sophisticated. Ok, I'm going to click on OK and the first dialog will actually ask me first and the only dialog in this wizard will ask me how do I want to package my application. So what I'm going to do, and this is something new for Delphi XC and Rad Studio XC, is a possibility to create a standalone self-contained uh, Windows executable that is both web server and also web application. So I'm going for go for this option in the VCL application and the wizard will create for me uh, the whole uh, project. So uh, there is a, a form for is a VCL form that also acts as a, a console of my web server. I can uh, 
uh, start it, I can stop it, I can start it on a specific port and from here I can also open a web browser so this will open a default web browser and will just display the user interface of our web application. The second unit that was generated uh, by the wizard is an empty web module, it's derived from a tdata module and this is a place where I implement uh, my web application logic. So first let's save uh, our applications. I'm going to go for my uh, data snap labs and here I have this web broker jQuery mobile uh, boilerplate uh, unit already in place. So uh, unit 5 is my uh, web, uh, module, web module unit. So I'm going to save it as a web module unit. The unit 4 is my main form unit. Okay, and the whole application is going to be called uh, Web Broker J Query Mobile Boiler Plate. Okay, so that's an empty application. So let's let's have a look uh, into the structure of this application to actually uh, understand what it's doing. So uh, first of all, uh, the central point of our application is web module. Web module uh, is a place where uh, all the arriving HTTP requests are being serviced. So let me quickly open options for my project and in the forms uh, I can see that the web module uh, is not created automatically uh, with the application but it's uh, available as a uh, form that has to be created uh, by the application itself. Okay, so that's an interesting thing and if you actually go into the uh, source code uh, you will see that the, our main form is actually auto-created uh, by the application but the web module uh, is only the class of a web module is assigned uh, to a global web request handler web module class property. So if I press Ctrl and jump into web module class I see that it's different as a typical uh, form application. So normally in a, a traditional VCL forms application we would see uh, a global variable uh, of a type of a form here but here we had that the global variable is a type of our web module. So that's quite similar uh, to data snap architecture uh, where uh, we specify only the type of a data uh, of, of a data snap uh, server methods class and it's up to the framework uh, to create and destroy instances of these uh, classes when needed. So that's similar uh, approach here where we can specify a web module. Okay, maybe I'm going to uh, rename those so I have a uh, more structure here. So instead of web module 5 I'm going to have a uh, web module main and my main form uh, is going to be called main form and not uh, just form 5. So somewhere here should be a name property. Let me make sure that the form is selected, uh, not, not the button. So here is my form main. So it's going to be boilerplate so I have to uh, take care that I have a proper naming. Okay, let's run the application and see uh, what is the default behavior of the application uh, generated here. So I need to start uh, my web application on port 8080 and now I'm going to open the browser. So it's going to just display uh, an static web server application uh, text. Okay, let's uh, move back. I'm going to stop this uh, application. Let's have a look into the structure of our uh, web module. So web module itself is derived uh, from a data module. So this is a convenient uh, container for some uh, non-visual uh, components. And this web module has a uh, action, actions property. So this is a collection uh, of, prop of uh, actions uh, that can be used to process uh, HTTP requests. So every uh, action is of type uh, web uh, action item, so that's my... the wizard has generated for us a um, web action item uh, called default handler that is going to respond to uh, any request, so you can specify which type of HTTP 
uh, request uh, you want to uh, this handler to react you can also specify the path uh, inside your URL so this is the uh, URL inside of your web application so you can add a different uh, logic here so also this event handler has on action property so in this on action property uh, this is uh, where we uh, specify uh, the actual uh, text or actual uh, content uh, that we assign to the uh, to the response so notice that this is a very the the most low level uh, possible way of working with HTTP so in this event I have everything that comes from the uh, HTTP client uh, available as part of the request so I can inspect programmatically the content of the request and as a programmer I need to uh, assign to different properties of response uh, argument which contains everything that's going to be sent back uh, to the server also I have a possibility to set the handled uh, property uh, to true or false in this case I can have a multiple event handlers uh, servicing the same uh, request so let's make it a little bit uh, more interesting and instead of uh, just uh, serving some standalone uh, content I'm going to do it uh, a little bit uh, more uh, dynamic uh, and I'm going to actually uh, assign uh, to my content property uh, something different so I'm going to actually uh, go ahead and maybe make it nicer so I can put some something more so I'm going to say okay this is going to be my paragraph and hello world hello world from Delphi Labs okay so that's my uh, first uh, paragraph and I'm going to add uh, some more content here so first of all I can put quite a lot of content in multiple lines so to really demonstrate that this is a dynamic content I'm going to uh, display uh, the current time using a now function so I'm going the time to write the time on the server is and here I'm going to provide some dynamic content date time to string and now will return a current uh, time so that's going to be my uh, first uh, dynamic uh, part and I'm going to maybe also uh, close this uh, paragraph so I'm going to add this something like this and maybe let's make this bold so it really uh, stands out uh, when this is uh, printed also programmatically we have access uh, to the um, to the um, response uh, content type so by default and I'm going to display what is the default value uh, of the uh, response content so HTTP uh, response content type is and I'm going to display whatever is the default uh, HTTP response time type response content type so this is going to display some dynamic content for us okay and this should be fine so now I have a example of a, a web uh, web broker application that d displays some uh, dynamic content in a moment I'm going uh, to display to uh, provide uh, this jQuery mobile boilerplate uh, instead so let's have a look uh, how our application works like now I'm going to start it open in the browser and this is uh, what we have got so this is our dynamic generated uh, page that displays a uh, current uh, time uh, and also it displays the default um, HTTP response content as text HTML so this is default content and we are not restricted to just text and HTML uh, we can uh, display uh, arbitrary uh, MIME type so you can for example assign to the content maybe a a JPEG uh, object, JPEG image, and set uh, its uh, content type uh, to JPEG, so you can very uh, easily uh, build it. 
Okay, so that was the very first uh, part uh, of my um, jQuery um, mobile uh, boilerplate. Uh, let's move to the part two.